is Victoria and Brad and thanks for coming to our channel. Today we are going to paint this bench and talk about different glaze techniques. This bench was made out of a headboard and a board. See it's got storage. It's beautiful. Um, I love the details and it even has the original casters um, but it needs some love. Brad made it a little while ago. Wish we had a video. So I am going to be doing a um, chalk paint, and it's our own mix of chalk paint, and I've got the recipe posted there. Most of the time when I make chalk paint, I don't add water, but um, or not a lot of water. I wanted this one a little thinner, um, and I added a little more paint ratio to the uh, plaster. I wanted the brush strokes to kind of flood and disappear. So you'll see what I'm talking about in a few minutes. You do have to make sure you stir it thoroughly. You do not want a chunk or a lump or anything. And this isn't the kind that you could store away, so I would just make it as much as you need at the time. It's going to be about the texture of heavy cream. I like to um, do a lot of the challenging places first because I can pounce and scrub it in if I have to, and then when I'm doing broad strokes, we'll smooth it all over. I'm looking forward to doing the uh, glazing technique because all of that detail is really going to pop. I will be doing more videos on different kinds of homemade chalk paint. And different glazing techniques. If you have a recipe of your own, why don't you comment below and let's share some recipes with everybody. I'd love to know what your mix is. I change my mixes all the time depending on how hard I want it to be. Classic chalk paint is actually made with a calcium. So we go with the second coat. Which is great, it's uh, not dangerous or toxic or anything, but it's not as hard as I want it to be. And I want this to be a really tough paint, so I like using it faster and making my own. So I can change the recipes as I need them. And you can see it gives pretty good coverage on two coats. Here's another reason I like making my own mix um, and made it as thin as I did. So you can just scrub it on in any which direction you want, smooth it out, and those brush strokes as it dries is just going to disappear. Glazing is really important. Um, you can get a glaze that uh, from any craft store, um, the blending medium, but is really more for art that will work in a pinch. But we do so much uh, faux painting and faux techniques that I go to the hardware store and I get a good blending glaze. This is Zinzer, it doesn't have to be this brand. But um, also let us know if you would like us to do a lot of uh, glazing techniques. I do faux wood techniques, uh, faux marbles, really nice ones. So this glaze, I don't always add water to my glazes either. This glaze is about a tablespoon of water, and oh, I don't write my recipes down. I always make them custom for what I'm doing, and I guess that's about two and a half tablespoons of the uh, glazing medium. I want, I don't always add water, I wanted this one to be sheer, and as it dries to look softer. If I did a glaze that was harder or did a dry brushing, um, it would just look too hard. Well, I clogged that one up, didn't I? <laughs> so I will use about one part black. And be careful with your blacks when you lighten them. A lot of them turn um, purple or off color or get muddy. And to about three parts white. But you can make any color gray you want. It's just what I'm doing today. and then stir. A lot. <laughs> so 
so you can see it's a nice soft gray. I like adding a lot of glaze and a lot of water. Um, you'll see when it goes on, it goes on a little dark, um, but it dries sheer. And if we're going for the aged look, we want it a little sheer and soft. So you're not dry brushing, you're just blotting so that it doesn't drip. It drags on very easily. And I like this glaze also because if you keep a towel with you and you don't like what you've just done, wipe it off if you're quick. <laughs> so again, it's easy. Just a little bit. And we're not dry brushing, we just don't want it to drip. And you'll see at the end of the video why I chose to do a glaze instead of dry brushing. And how it dries. I do like to get the uh, corners pretty heavy, that would naturally happen. But it's interesting, years ago people liked things aged very authentically um, in the browns and, you know, to look old. And nowadays we find um, that people want balance. And so we're very careful about the way we edge. This is a cool technique coming up. So I get the edges to get most of the paint off the brush and then drag like that. Isn't that beautiful? Love that. We're going to do that all over the bench. You're going to see that here because you don't want stark white, right? <laughs> and then a worn edge. It just wouldn't look right. But you also have to be very careful not to make it look like stripes. I see a lot of times uh, people have done pieces and the aging just looks like stripes. And what's nice is you can change the pressure on the brush, off on, off on, heavy light, heavy light, um, as you're stroking. If you're doing a large piece like this, change the pressure of your brush on and off so that uh, it varies. And to make sure that uh, your piece doesn't look like it has stripes on it too, you'll see coming up, uh, brush in different directions. Don't just go in one direction. Go across, go kind of at an angle. Because the eye will follow lines, and if it looks like there's too many lines, that's what the eye will see. And we just want to soften the piece. I tried changing the quality of the film here, hoping it would show up better for you. Um, I don't know if it's working, but I tried. But see how soft, see how we're changing directions, and see how soft that looks, and then when that dries, it's going to be even softer. I love what glazing can do to a piece. I even do clay glazing on fine art canvas pieces sometimes, I'll do layers of glaze different technique. There's so many things you can do with glaze and just so many recipes. Let me know if you want us to do uh, more glazing recipes. See how I wiped it with my hand and you'll see kind of scrub it a little bit. There you go with my towel. This is a great easy to manipulate glaze that does dry a lot sheerer than what you see. Now there are some glazes I add no water at all, like I said earlier, um, because I want the color to remain, but I need it to be fluid for a longer period of time so I can manipulate the paint. You see how, look at this, I'm painting left-handed. I'm a righty. I never knew I painted left and right until I watched myself on videos. I had to give up piano lessons because I couldn't get my hands to coordinate. Apparently independently they're just fine.
<laughs> this is the inside, and Brad and I are putting the fabric in. I thought this fabric fit perfectly. I thought it was very nice. Um, it's a, I thought it would go with a lot of different styles, and definitely match the style of the bench. But if somebody wasn't thrilled, it's inside, not outside. I will admit, I do not sew, and I don't work with materials a lot. So we played with the corner uh, pleats here. We were trying to decide, I didn't want to cut, I didn't want seams, I didn't want to overlap, so I wanted to keep it one solid piece. And we thought about pushing it to one side, and all kinds of techniques, and eventually we decided on doing the pleat. If there is someone out there that works with materials more than I do, please let me know on the best, best ways to go. So we were just kind of playing with it. I like the diamond corner. We thought that was good. And like I said, I didn't want to cut the material. So comment if you have techniques that we should know about. I would love to learn. Okay, liquid stitch. I thought how fabulous. I want to put a border, the ribbon border on, and um, I, I was going to tack it with hot glue. The liquid stitch says it takes about 30 minutes to dry. I thought, fabulous, right? <laughs> well, do you see those wet stripes on there? We didn't like it, and we thought, well, they said they, it dries clear, maybe because the hot glue's not showing, so maybe it won't show. Well, when it dried, it looked just like that. It was awful. I did some research, and I found a link, Craft Test Dummies. I'm going to put the link um, underneath. Craft Test Dummies actually did a comparison. They have a post of a comparison of uh, different fabric glues and how they worked, and they talked about this having um, leaving kind of a wet stain. So we ended up, we were committed, we were gonna go through with it and see if it dried properly, but it, of course it didn't, so we had to peel it off. And we basically hot glued and tacked it all afterwards. I was very disappointed, but I'll put the, uh, the link underneath, it's a fun watch. They're, they compare different uh, fabric glues. So again, anyone work with fabric? Let us know. We did try and make sure that the fabric was adhered to the walls, nice and firm. So it looks nice and clean. And this is the piece. See how soft the uh, gray glazing dried? Really thought it turned out nice. We just love it. It's so hard to sell some pieces. So please like and subscribe, everybody. Um, share the video. Uh, it would really help us out. Let us know if you want more like this. And we hope everybody is well and safe and happy. Thanks so much, everyone. We just love this. I hope you do, too.